Alien John uh, Foundation Boy Workshop in Raleigh, North Carolina, class one of six. Uh, we were dealing with super, super fundamental stuff today just to get everybody on the same page. Um, we just started out by reviewing basic sweep turn to pup turn. So spinning forwards in wheel plane, sweeping low, turning around to reverse, sweeping high, turning to forwards. You can think of a golf ball being down here on the floor by your heels, sweeping past that, and a bell hanging not over your head, hit your head, but off the side, maybe over your shoulder. You're swinging up and ringing, turning around. Um, we also emphasize footwork, not just swinging the toy. Uh, a good way to, to play with this, just with the body, is to keep the arms out of the horizon, step back, opening up to the wall, your feet are open, your hands are swung down, and follow through, closing the feet, your arms come up to the other uh, horizon. And the idea is that you want to Feel that swing, that way in your hands, and really get the, the swing of the hands and the opening and closing movement of the body, all that happen in unison, so that you're, you're not like chasing after your hands or you're, you're starting to go and dragging the hands with you. Uh, it's very, very high key to everything moves in unison. In fact, I'm just going to throw this out there so it's on the video. Um, a general ergonomic principle is that for every quarter turn of your body, your arms will go through a quarter turn of their large circle. So from here to here, it's both a quarter turn of my body on a compass and a quarter turn of my arms on a clock. From here to here is a quarter turn. From here to here is both arms and body quarter turn. From here to here, from here to here. Here to here, from here to here. Of course, when we're doing that in motion and flow of spinning, we don't look like a robot going check, check around the clock. But it's good to become aware of those alignments. Those are focus points you want to check yourself on. So that every quarter turn of your body, you're checking for alignment in your body and your arm position. Um, and we sort of, you know, took, took those ideas back to checking our spinning. We also practice tuck turns. Tuck turns, instead of sweeping to the front of your body, are allowing your boy to come past you, behind you, and tucking behind your body. So we did behind the head, the shoulders, behind the butt, the armpits. Uh, a good practice here is to, especially over the head, sort of pause and see if you can actually feel and keep some control of your boy swinging there behind your shoulders, and then use body movement to bring it back out. Of course, it's a little it's tricky. We can't just sort of like dangle our boy behind our butt. So it's maybe a little harder to practice in the low tuck turn. The, the idea, one, one way to think about it is you are swinging your boy past your body, bringing the hands up like someone's giving you 10 behind the back, lifting the boy up towards your armpit as you flourish around, sweeping off the shoulders. So you could at least pantomime that, holding your boy, instead of swimming pendulums. So it comes up, you're turning your body, and you're sweeping. Okay, next part of what we do. Let's um, go back to the sweep turns or tuck turns. Uh, we actually started taking that into something a little bit more advanced, where instead of just tucking near the body, you extend your arms and start to turn this into a flower pattern. So there's a basic remedial sort of review practice. 
practice. It's a tough turn. It's can in fact inform something a little more advanced. We did a little of that. Um, let's see. Any any real key points that I covered with the sweep turns and tough turns? Oh, we did the anti spin sweep. Yeah. Oh. Yep. <laughs> okay. So with back to sweep turns, instead of just always going with the flow of boy sweeping low or sweeping high, we can do that sweep neutral, sort of like a windshield wiper, sweeping it across, sweeping it across. We can even sort of invert the relationship. So if the boy are falling down where we naturally want them to swing down, I can actually raise those up, sweep that in front of my face like a windshield wiper. And when the boy are swinging in reverse, Instead of going up and over, I can bring that down and sweep off my belly button. So we can turn that into a flower as well. It happens to be practicing some really nice together time plane control and freedom of motion as we go. And by the way, for next, next week, this is also this sweep in front of our face there is essentially getting us ready for just locking out into shoulder wheels. And this sweep right there in the front of our belly button is getting us ready to lock out into hip wheels as well. So we're laying the groundwork to just plug this into like all of the things. <laughs> um, from there, we switched gears into pendulums. We took, we asked people for requests who's keen on uh, hybrids, which we're going to work up to. Uh, hybrids basically involve having your head in front of your tummy, doing something with one hand and a different thing with the other hand. And a great way to start that out that really informs a variety of spinning is working with pendulums and being able to do a pendulum while you're spinning. So we started out with pendulums. We played with just Basically, keeping the boy swinging the pendulums, and seeing what it takes to the long arm, bring them up in the front of you, switch the windshield wipers here, bring them up, drag them over, and you hit pendulum. We practice this against a wall because the pendulum is a really great test of whether or not you've got really good plane control. Spinning, putting lots of tension into that, that helps flatten out your plane is easy. Keeping a nice, clean plane. Finger control your boy when swinging pendulum is hard because it keeps hitting the zero point there and there at the moment of hang time. So we play with that, <clears throat> play with pendulum practice near a wall, and I wanted people to explore whether they can really turn their torso while doing that. And using this wall as feedback to see where you can get to without passing through your plane or losing your plane. The real pinnacle of that, you, if I come over here, you get a good angle on this. So sort of the pinnacle that you're going for is being able to, I'm going to shorten up, get my torso turned, but keep my arms close on the same sort of plane, or either like right next to each other. So that I'm not just standing here moving my arms, I'm actually using the turning of my hips and movement of my whole body to drive the boy movement. Um, from pendulum play, we, we got into spinning, <coughs> spinning forward together time, same direction, and practicing just stopping one boy and swinging a pendulum while keeping the other boy rotating and swinging back in. Stop one boy, go ahead and swing a little bit, swing it back in. If that's difficult, you can really just let one boy come to a complete stop and get used to what it feels like to have this hand just not doing anything while the other boy spins, and then bring them back in. In case you try to do a pendulum bit, but your hands like sort of freak out and both try to spin. Like sometimes people will try to stop and then their hand just keeps going. Uh, 
Um, from there, we played with swinging and reversing directions, one coy at a time. So I'm alternating with right hand and left hand. So that was in wall playing. That actually gets a little confusing when you're in opposites on either side of you. You can also practice this in wheel playing, facing you know, to the backwards. The last one. This is wheel playing. You can also practice this in wall playing, where you're swinging both of them on the wall in front of you and just reversing one in butterfly, reversing the other into the same direction, reversing one into butterfly, reversing the other in the same direction, so on and so forth. All of those are really good practices. This isn't a particular trick or a move all by itself. It's a concept. It's something to take and work on for months and months and months in every possible position that you can find it, uh, because it's it's going to let you really effortlessly transition between opposite direction movement and together direction, same direction movement. Any, anything missing with that stuff? Pendulum. I think that was the meat of it. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, then what the heck did we just do? Arms crossed. Arms crossed. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. So, you're still recording. You don't want to know the face could. Um, we brought it all the way back to basic spinning and Crossing. This is mostly review. Uh, it's extra work for Jeff since he's new to boy. So we're spinning together, kind of in the same direction and forward. And as the boy falls down from the ceiling, that's when it's safe to cross them all the way over your body, not just part way over the body. That'll hurt. Um, so you cross them all the way over, and then you really have to scoop up the upswing here on either side of you to get them to stabilize so they don't just come around and whack you in the back of the head. And of course you want to get comfortable with this with the right hand crossing over or the left hand crossing over and you want to feel comfortable crossing and stopping and keeping your arms crossed and controlling that. Crossing the other one, keeping that in control. Um, I mentioned it earlier in class but I'm going to say here that in general when trying to control your planes if you're getting into some awkward cross position or like you end up behind your back or something, and your planes start tipping on you, like maybe this starts happening and you don't like that, um, the upswing is what's important. As the poi passes the ground, swings past that pull of gravity, you have to really scoop enough energy into the poi to get all the way back up and over the top. I think like 80, 90% of people's problems with plane control and getting some odd angles <coughs> putting themselves is that their timing's off or they're just feeling tentative and not quite getting enough oomph up and over and so it sort of falls off at this angle and starts hitting you. So just remember that if you're in an odd position, your boy are like bending in at you, uh, scoop them up, you can bounce them a little bit and that will really help control your planes. Um, so from there, we even played with, just for the more advanced people, something that a lot of folks haven't actually tried, which is uh, basically a weaving arm motion, <coughs> but in together time instead of split time, where most people do a 3D weave. Yeah, so here's, here's a 3D weave in split time, in together time, here's a 4D weave. So using the same arm motion, but because the koi have shifted their relationship half a turn to get from split time to same time, you end up having to add a whole extra beat there before you can swing the koi around from the front. And of course you want to be able to do that in reverse. All the things 
And that eventually leads to, since we're eventually wanting to get into hybrids, this sort of, what am I going on now? <laughs> but this sort of movement eventually leads to this sort of head-to-hand arm tracing, or not arm tracing, we could arm trace it. 